in the background, Dozer sees a squirrel. So we finally made it to our camping grounds. Short trip, I didn't want to do too long a mileage uh, on his first time on the pylon pooch. He did pretty good. I had to, you know, play around with the length of the chain. Initially, I wanted it long enough so he could lay down. Uh, naively thinking he might lay down, but no, he's standing up and uh, he was trying to like crap around me onto my lap. So I had to stop and shorten it up uh, a couple more times. And uh, he likes sort of putting his feet on the, the back seat there and uh, where like a second rider would go and just looking over my shoulders so I could sort of see him in my rear view mirror peeking over this and peeking over that. We had quite the trials and tribulations with the rec specs. Uh, now there's sort of how to videos to get your dog acclimatized to the rec specs. And I sort of rushed it cause I wanted to go camping. I wanted to try out the pylon pooch, not necessarily the rec specs. Well, he would tolerate it with me on the couch or something, petting him. Um, but as soon as we got him on the bike, he was digging into the back. And, uh, the next time I sit, see him peek around my shoulder, no more rec specs. So I turned around. Luckily, within a mile, I was able to find them. On the side of the road, the frames were fine, but the, the clear lens was just smashed. So like five minutes into it, the whole lens just scraped to crap. So live and learn. I guess I should have had patience, but I, you know, I had driven around uh, some short trips, neighborhoods, stuff like that. And then I thought, well, maybe he'll realize, like he has human logic, right? That uh, he needs some wind protection for his eyes, but that turned out not to be the case. I'm trying this belching beaver butter or peanut butter milk stout. And uh, it's actually pretty good. It does have a little, little bit of peanut butter flavor to it, sort of a you know, stout, but I'm saving my Guinness for dinner. And so I probably could talk a lot about the gear I had, but uh, one of the things is that I have problems with today with bringing all the camping gear and the pylon pooch and all this kind of stuff was getting firewood. So on the side of my Atacama, which are made by Moskimoto for BMW, side bags they have sort of these little side pullouts that you could stick a jacket or something and i had one bundle of wood sort of strapped in there another bundle of wood on the other side i got some rock straps just so i didn't lose any just in case on the on the freeway this is not wilderness camping it's a it's a county park called davis creek and uh beautiful little creek and some some ponds that are fishable and stuff like that tons of trails try to wear those out this is a short camping trip it's just sort of a proof of concept to get see how dozer does in the tent and all that kind of stuff we actually assembled the tent and slept uh on my sleeping bag in the tent inside the living room just to make sure he was okay before i brought him out pro tip for more cycle camping especially if you're in sort of a established campground like I am, is go and walk around to all the other uh, abandoned sites. And I found tons of wood that people have just left behind. The ranger stopped and thanked me because she was gonna have to clean it up either one way or another. So it was a win-win. So I have four bundles of wood <laughs> just for the night, but, uh, Hey, you know, I like fire. Who doesn't? So it's starting to rain now, so I'm going to put my camera equipment away, and I'm sure Dozer's not enjoying it. Thank you. 
I want to talk a little bit about what's in just a, my basic camping kit. Um, so I got the three piece um, Cedar Summit and they all sort of fold up cup, bowl into, into this thing. Um, a basic cutting board from Coleman. It actually has a few more pieces that snap into each other, but I could also use it as a plate. I brought some, some meat tongs that I don't usually bring uh, just because I was cooking some meat. A good spork. This little thing I've had for a long time and it's aluminum. Um, which isn't the best material, but it's light. But the great thing about it is um, you can use it to cook in a fire. Unlike the uh, Seed of Summit, you can only use them on uh, burners, sort of like this little MSR pocket rocket. So the pocket rocket I've had for like 15 years and it's simple. It goes on various different sized uh, isobutane canisters and it folds up, it's light. And this thing just keeps on trucking up at least 15 years that I've had this. So, um, but these could only go on those little type of flame grills. The sides can't be exposed to fire also will melt. So this little thing, the lid fits on pretty tight. The nice thing about aluminum is it doesn't retain heat well. So it's sort of easy to lift up the handle or, or uh, take the lid off. Maybe not take the lid off um, without burning your hands. Like if you had a stainless steel cooking pot, uh, titanium would work too, just much more expensive. I got this cheap camping set and I mean, this thing's been all, all around as you could see. Um, and then when it's not in use, I store things inside of it. So I have my coffee mate creamer, some of that uh, Nescafe gold dehydrated coffee that I rave about couple little fast fire fire starters uh, one little citronella candle the mosquitoes get bad you know and they all could sort of fit in there uh, the other thing I have for my dog is a collapsible um, water tray and it also hooks let me just dump the water out I'll get you more buddy it also hooks around uh, a water bottle with a little canteen so you could, you know, carry it um, around. So it's made by a company called uh, Kurgo, where his um, it's made by a company called Kurgo, where his harness and, and coat come from. So a large Nalgene bottle. The bad thing about Nalgene is that uh, when they're empty, you, they still take up the volume, but uh, they're decent. I mean, you can see it's gotten beat up and still trucking and it's easy to fill up with water. There you go, bud. Uh, the remaining of Dozer's dog food is left over. Some salt and pepper, a dollar store. The, uh, the other thing I carry is this little, I know it's sort of cheesy, but e-wire. Um, and it's sort of nice. It unspools, the last on these batteries forever, it sort of unspools. And uh, if you have a guide wire on your tent or something like that, that you keep on tripping over, or you want to sort of mark your campsite or just a little ambiance or whatever, um, it's sort of nice. It's, this is definitely a, a nice to have. It's a little bit of a Burning Man remnant. Uh, some trash bags. I always carry an extra couple lighters stashed into places. Some uh, Purell hand sanitizer. It's good for disinfecting wounds. Just clean your hands before you eat. And also nice little fire starter. Um, the nice thing I like about cans of soup or anything that have a pop top is you don't need to carry uh, a can opener. You know, a little P58 or whatever, it's not that heavy or bulky, but they're so nice. The 
caution is never cook things inside the can because most things, especially if they're acidic, have a plastic liner in it. So if you're cooking it on the can, all that plastic's being melted into your food. So, <clears throat> you know, stick it in a pot or something like that. Um, then my trusted vacuum seal coffee cup by Ello. Uh, I did a review on this coffee cup before. Uh, another thing that's probably not part of a camping necessarily, but is this um, battery bank. This one is 20,000 milliamps. So the thing is I charge it with my bike as I'm riding around, so it's charging. And then it has four USB ports and also has a little light for it. And when I'm riding, it's charging, I'm charging from my bike to this and then I have my phone plugged into there. So this is always staying topped off and then charging my ele other electronics. So this is nice. This is, you know, could keep me three or four days charging all my camera batteries and, and cell phone and stuff like that um, without having to recharge. So that's the basic kit. The other thing I want to talk about is this. I found this, I've tried lots of different uh, insulated packs. This one's sort of soft, so it, it's crushable. Um, sort of insulated here. I still have a frozen water bottle from two days ago, um, a sandwich and a beer in here. And uh, this is what I use for work every single day, in my hot trunk. And it says it's ready to keep things cold for 24 hours. I don't know. This thing definitely works. Um, it's a great little cheap um, lunch pail and it, it can sort of be strapped down or compressed, you know, anywhere on the bike. So it's not, doesn't have sharp edges or anything like that. So that's uh, basically my camping kit. All right, so as I'm waiting for my coffee to go through, I talked a little bit about pre-mixing them. These are my backups because I went through all my pre-mixes. So one of the things I want to talk about is when camping with the dog is how much water you go through. So these are 48 ounce um, Nalgene bottles. Dozer goes through about two of these a day. Uh, I think part of it is because he wants to have enough urine to pee on every single rock and bush and blade of grass that we walk by to make sure the forest knows that this is his. So he's probably drinking more uh, so he could he could stock up to do his dog duties. Um, and then I, you know, and then I go through maybe one and a half of these a day. I probably don't drink as much water as I should. But if you're, so I'm in a campsite, as you can see with the fire pit, those are sunning in the background. If you're, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you need to bring a lot of water, more, more than uh, one would think for your dog. Dogs, they go through a lot, especially when they're, they're working because you have to remember, you know, they, they sweat through their tongue and all that kind of stuff. So he definitely, he didn't eat as much food as I thought. I pre-measured and then I, I gave him a little bit extra and he didn't eat as much food. I think he's just been so excited. Um, so every dog will, will vary, but you want to plan to bring extra food than your dog usually eats because he's working harder, you know, he's more excited. Uh, last night we were freezing. I, I discovered today about, I think it's called EN ratings for sleeping bags. So I bought this cheapo at an outdoor store sleeping bag, 40, 50 bucks that was supposed to be rated to zero degrees. And I'm thinking Fahrenheit. So I'm thinking, Hey, that's, that's great. Packs down pretty small. It was about 42 degrees last night and I was freezing in my zero degree sleeping bag. So that's when you go to the store and you see one zero degree sleeping bag for $40 and another for 150 hanging up and on display. And you're like, what's the difference? It must be the name brand. It's not. One's actually rated and the other one is just a marketing ploy from China. I've been researching sleeping bags today. I've been researching sleeping mats because I had just a basic isopore mat from like the military. Uh, and I'm a side sleeper now that I'm older and maybe like two pounds heavier than when I was in the Marine Corps. And that thing wasn't cutting it either. Uh, Dozer was fine. Uh, his dog bed has like aluminum in it, sort of like space blanket material, so it reflects the heat back. And I should have brought a space blanket for myself. The other thing is a better tent. So my tent, I'll show you some pictures, was 25 bucks 15 years ago at Walmart when I was going on a 
impromptu camping trip in North Carolina. And uh, it served me well uh, for 25 bucks. I probably used it 15, 20 times. It, it packs down fairly small, uh, but it doesn't have a vestibule. Uh, it has a rain cover, but it doesn't really have a vestibule to keep things sort of dry. And one of the things that's nice to keep your gear dry but the other things vestibules do is it sort of provides you an area that you could take off your shoes or dust off or brush off your shoes that's dry. So dozers tracking in mud, I'm tracking in mud. It's another good plus one for a vestibule. The other thing you wanna do, and dog owners know this, is bring poop bags. You know, most of us have it tied to the leash like I do, because you never know when they're gonna poop. You might take them for their morning walk and they don't go and then they go later. So you wanna be a responsible dog owner. Uh, you don't want to spread disease, so always carry little poop bags for your dog. Lots of water, more food than he, he normally eats cause, or she, because they're burning more energy. And then they're also, typically, it's colder at night, so it's requiring more calories to um, keep warm. Just like you, those of you who, who winter camp a lot, when I was at Mountain Warfare School in Bridgeport, you know, one of the things that we were taught was always eat your biggest meal at night. Now this is counterintuitive to some of you diet gurus out there, but when it's cold, when it's hot, it doesn't really matter. Uh, when it's cold, you want to eat a lot of calories before you go to sleep, because those calories are gonna allow your body to keep warm so you're not shivering all night. The same goes with the dog. So, you know, he might, or she might be, used to eating at six or seven or something, but push it back as far as you can because uh, they need that those calories to stay warm at night as well. One of the things I was taught is always feed your dog before you eat uh, growing up. And so that's what I do. And so I try to eat my meal late into the night and it's nice to eat it around the campfire, um, but then I'll feed the dog late at night too. That way he, he has the calories there when he needs to sleep. So today was Dozer's first ride on the pylon pooch. And uh, let's might as well just start this over. Let him chase the squirrel. This isn't cocaine, this is a little um, vanilla creamer. These are 48 ounce, so two quarts, or no, quarts 32. Um, about a liter, okay. <laughs> Let's start this all over again. <laughs> 